Hi, my name is Kevin and welcome to my next video in HTML and CSS for beginners. If you haven't watched the other videos, I strongly recommend you go back and check them out, especially if you're just starting out with web design and development. B but of course, you've already watched them, what am I saying? Uh, as you can see now, we're adding some classes to our divs and span, so let's get to that. So classes are a way that we can differentiate divs and paragraphs and pretty much any tag that we have a lot of. So right now I have two divs here and if you remember back to the last video I had made them both into pink boxes so I just come here and selected my divs and said uh, that I wanted them both to be pink so I did a background pink and then I hit a refresh and I had two pink boxes. but in real life, that's not something we do. Divs are kind of useless uh, unless we give them a class. They're not really doing very much. Because, uh, you know, we don't want all of our divs to look the same. They're what we use to organize our layouts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first div here and I'm going to give it a class, which is another attribute that we haven't looked at. So think of a class like the name of the div. We're going to name our div and we're going to call it John. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we want our class names to be descriptive. So let's just call this one um, top section. And let's call this div down here at the bottom, bottom section. So I have two divs, but they have their own names now. This one is my top section and my bottom section. So I'm going to come up to my styles now. And I want to select my div that has a class of top section. So we know that selecting a HTML tag, I just have to write whatever is inside the triangle brackets. But now we're adding classes to it. So to select a class, instead of, we have to, we have to tell it that it's a class. And we do that with a period. That little dot in the world of CSS means class. So class of top section. And the rest of it works exactly the same. So the period means class. I'm selecting my class top section and let's do background pink. And if I did that properly, I'm going to save. And when I refresh, only this first box should become pink. Hey, and look at that. It worked. And now I can come here and I can do bottom section. And I can say the background on this one is green. And there we go. I'm really on my way to making a really ugly website. <laughs> um, but you can see now the power of classes let me separate things. And I'm going to turn off these background colors because they're both pretty ugly. And I'm going to do a refresh there. I'll leave that there, but I'm going to come back and just show you we can do this for other things as well. So I've come here and I've selected both of my paragraphs, or all of my paragraphs. In this case, I have two of them. And I've chosen this color. But what if I want this paragraph to be a little bit bigger? This one, uh, I like this size, but this first paragraph should be bigger than the other one. I can come and give this a class. So class of intro. Um, my introduction text in this case is a bit longer. So I can come and say intro. So I'm selecting my class with the period of intro. And then I'm coming here and I'm going to do a font size of 30 pixels. I'm going to save that and hit refresh. And now this is 30 pixels. And this one here is the 21 pixels that we had from before. You'll notice though, they both keep the same color. So what's happening now is it's part of the cascade. All of my paragraphs are getting this. So this is cascading down. It's selecting both of my paragraphs, but this intro is only selecting something that has a class of intro. So I could actually come in here and overwrite the color. I could say my color is yellow and it will overwrite it because I'm being more specific here. The browser's reading through here, so it comes, oh, I have a P tag. This needs to be my dark blue color here. Oh wait, I have an intro and this should be yellow. So that wins out. And then it comes down and it goes P tag. Okay, this should be blue and that's it. My P tag is staying there and it's working like that. Um, now that yellow color is kind of nasty, so we'll get rid of it and refresh. Um, so we can do the same with spans. And for the most part, spans are sort of like divs by themselves. So we just do a span like this. Um, it's not really the most useful thing in the world because 
well, you know, you might have different spans you want to do. Sometimes you want to make something a different color. Sometimes you want to make the font bigger. Sometimes you want to change the font family. Who knows what you want to do? You want to give it a background color. So let's call this one span class equals highlight. And uh, over later on in that paragraph, I'm going to do another one. Span class is equal to, uh, let's call it accent color. And then we have to close our span. So I'm going to save this file, come back to my style sheet, and let's go and change those. So my first one was a class of highlight, height light, highlight. And I'm going to give this one a background of yellow. And my second one was accent color. And I'm going to give this one a color of red. So I'm going to save both of those, come over here and refresh. And you can see here, this first span has gotten its background color of yellow. And this second span has gotten its text color of red. In general, we use classes all over the place. Classes are very, very, very common. Another thing that you're going to see that lets us be specific like this as well is something called an ID. So we use IDs very similar to how we use classes. I have a P class of intro, um, or here, in this case, this might be a better example. I have this div and this div, and I have a top section and bottom section. So instead of giving it a class, I could give these an ID and an ID. Um, so an ID is very similar to a class. It works really pretty much the same way with one big difference. First of all, it's more specific, but the more important thing is you can only have one ID per page that's the same. So I can't have a top section and then another top section somewhere else. There's other differences and other uses for ID, but for now, just know that uh, an ID is a unique identifier. So it's sort of like, uh, you know, my name is Kevin and I am a YouTuber. My class would be YouTuber. There's tons of other YouTubers out there. We all make YouTube videos. That's what we have in common. But my name is Kevin and well, maybe there's other Kevins out there, but let's just pretend for the moment I'm the only one. Um, that's my ID. I'm, I'm, that's me. It's who I am. And I just happen to also make YouTube videos. So an ID is unique. I can only have one top section. And in general, to stop problems from coming up, especially when you're just starting off, you don't really need to go, well, should it be an ID or should it be a class? Save yourself some trouble and only use class. Uh, and just to, I haven't even shown you, you can use the class over and over again. So let's do another span class equals highlight. And let's close that here, close span. And let's come here and do another one, span class. Let's see, we'll do highlight. And let's close that span here. And one more, span class is equal to accent color. And close span, save all of that, hit refresh. And you can see that they're all getting those properties. So I have these ones that are getting the background color. This one's getting the text color. I can use them over and over again. So let's say I want to change uh, some things with my top section and my bottom section. They're IDs now. So if you remember, this is my class. Period means class. Uh, an ID is with a hashtag instead, or the pound symbol, or whatever we want to call it. Uh, so now I can do a background of pink on that one and I can come down here and do a background of green on this one save them and I have my two different sections with their two different colors and those are with the IDs but uh, what I'm actually gonna recommend to you especially for now uh, there's times where IDs can serve a purpose uh, that will disappear and let's change this back to class and this back to class save to bring it back. Um, I sort of recommend just using classes. Classes are more common. And the advantage with a class is if you only use it once, that's fine. You just used it once. But if you need to use it more than once, well, there's no problem. It, you can just use it over and over and over again. 
you don't have to think about it too much. You just you just go ahead and do it. So uh, I really recommend just stick to classes. IDs complicate matters. Okay, should this be an ID? Should it be a class? I'm not really sure. Uh, um, IDs do serve a purpose, and you'll start learning about that later on. But it really, at this point, it's not something you got to concern yourself with. So uh, that's the introduction to classes and IDs, with a big emphasis on classes. If you are not sure about anything, as usual, uh, you know, I say it every video, and I'm going to keep saying it, but leave a comment or question down below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.